We've seen the headlines. Russia attacking the largest nuclear plant in Europe. President Putin mobilizing Russia's nuclear deterrence forces, which include nuclear weapons. And the power being cut at Chernobyl, raising the prospect of a nuclear accident. Nuclear threats and nuclear radiation are scary. But what happens to the human body when we get exposed to radioactive material? Let's see what we can learn from history. Okay, first, let's go back to Chernobyl, but in 1986. A surge in power during a test resulted in a steam explosion and a fire that released large amounts of radioactive material. It was an old-style Soviet reactor that didn't have full containment. That's Norman Kleiman, a radiation expert at Columbia University. He said that because of that, when the reactor blew, it was able to spew a cloud of radioactive material into the atmosphere. That radioactive material is just atoms that are unstable and can damage cells. That radioactive cloud then spread around the world. Among the people who were most affected were plant workers and first responders, people who were exposed to very high radiation levels very quickly. I'm going to give you a unit. It's called one sievert. That's what some of the workers at Chernobyl were exposed to. That led to acute exposure symptoms like vomiting, dizziness, diarrhea, nausea, damage to the digestive system, and severe burns. Basically, you're killing all the dividing cells in your body. And it's a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. In the months after Chernobyl, about 100 people suffered from that acute exposure, and about 30 people died. It's that big, quick hit that makes radiation exposure so dangerous. But thankfully, disasters of that magnitude are pretty rare. About 25 years after Chernobyl, a powerful earthquake caused a tsunami that damaged the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan, triggering a meltdown. But in contrast to Chernobyl, workers at the Fukushima power plant were exposed to radiation levels that were about 10 times lower. No one got a dose big enough to trigger the acute effects seen at Chernobyl. Beyond the immediate acute risks, scientists also look at the long-term ramifications of nuclear radiation exposure, including an increased risk of cancer. A United Nations report found that workers from Chernobyl had a slightly increased chance of leukemia, and some developed cataracts. People who lived in the area also got exposed to radiation. It's in that population that the most clear connection between cancer and radiation exposure exists. Their exposure came from consuming contaminated food, particularly milk that was contaminated with radioactive iodine. That radioactive iodine made its way into the thyroid, where it damaged cells. The thyroid is a gland involved in controlling metabolism. So after three months, it's gone. But that first three months, you want to avoid foodstuffs that are contaminated. There's been about 6,000 cases of thyroid cancer reported so far among children exposed to radioactive iodine after Chernobyl. 15 of them died, but the vast majority, 95%, were treated successfully. Apart from the increased risk of thyroid cancer, that UN report didn't find any increased risk for other kinds of cancer in the general population. So if the data isn't as bad as we may have thought, why are we so anxious about radiation exposure? Part of it is that it's invisible. We don't understand radiation. We can't smell it. We can't see it. We can't taste it. We don't know if we're being exposed, but we're scared of it. One of the major misconceptions about radiation exposure is that its adverse effects are heritable, meaning that they get passed down from parents to their children. Some of those fears date back to World War II, when the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. After the atomic bombings, all the media, all the press, even scientists believed the heritable effects were the real outcome to worry about. Not true. A key study from April found that there weren't any radiation-related genetic changes passed on from parents to children among Chernobyl survivors. One of the most common impacts of radiation exposure might actually be the most overlooked. The World Health Organization by far says the largest health outcome of any radiological disaster is mental health. Fear, anxiety, and adoption of unhealthy behaviors because of this misperception about real risk versus relative risk. In other words, nuclear disasters cause a lot of trauma. All of this adds up to what the UN report described as serious social and psychological disruption. So where does that leave us? Norman reiterated that no level of radiation was 100% safe, but we had to gauge that risk against other health hazards. He said that for low levels of exposure, the kind you might get while you're flying in an airplane or even at the Chernobyl site today, the risks are pretty low. The health risks from drinking or smoking are actually higher. We now know that a higher risk of cancer after Chernobyl was only seen in a subset of people, mostly children who ate contaminated food. That could have been prevented if people had been told to avoid potentially contaminated food 
or if there had been iodine pills available soon after the disaster. Norman told me that these pills only work to keep radioactive iodine out of the thyroid if they're given within 24 hours of exposure. Major problems arise when precautions aren't taken to mitigate risks. That's the main takeaway from Chernobyl and other major nuclear disasters we've experienced. If you found this video informative, hit the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching y gracias. Thank you.